That's the thing. We respect Shot. each other. We respect to be treated like exactly. a human being. 100%. You should and that's, be. And that's, and that's exactly. like everybody respects you for what you what you do for its all, yeah. especially. But I think the main thing is is how you don't kind of <coughs> single anybody out. There's no yeah. like it. You know, it's what it's what you provide. Right. Your problem. We're all on the same page. That's right. It, yeah. You don't. Yeah. Like you're you're. Might as well be right in the middle of it with us, you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't like you've never been kind of, you never stood out, you know, at all. It's you know, Charlie's house. That's I'm great. no better than you guys. You know, that place up on St. George is in my place. That's your guys. That's, yeah, that's, right. that's yours, you know. Yeah. We stood out in a parking lot. It was all of us standing out in a parking lot together. It wasn't just us, and it wasn't just you. It was all of us together until we got a place, right? Everybody had respect. And from asking you guys, like if I offered you affordable housing, you all raised your hand. That tells me that's what we need to fight for. Exactly. You know, you can invest a million dollars and you can put a thousand rooms in a shelter, but if nobody's using them and they still want their own place, their own privacy, their own dignity, that's what we have to push for them, fight exactly. for, you know? Why not a big building and everybody like share a kitchen and Bathrooms, bathrooms and have each yeah. their own personal room with locks. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Well, they're, they're they're Maybe you don't get to yeah. Yeah, yeah, like kids to I think the way that if you want people to use their like rooms at need. the shelters, they should be able to land their beds whenever they want. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way we can even do it. Well, the thing is, you're not children. And what does that mean? You're not, you're not children. And I mean, that could be a lot of to lay in their bed upstairs through the day, whatever they want, as long as they respect the rules. I mean, that would change the mindset of the public. Up because they're hurt. They'll stay at the shelters and respect the rules. I guarantee you. Well, I think another big thing, too, is is they're not seeing enough of us doing things out in the community to help the community. Yeah, they don't see us. So, we need to start going to the community and people that are exactly. running around shooting needles and being 100%. useless and I mean I get that mindset too for, for sure uh, that's yeah. pretty much banging to but here's the thing I can put a video on Facebook right now or online or in the news of 10 times you guys are out picking up garbage throughout the whole city doing yeah. good yeah. one article <laughs> about a needle being found at a daycare by someone who may be homeless, yeah. the yeah. whole group. Nobody cares yeah. what so, good you but do, yet, Well, that's it. Negative news exactly. carries faster than positive news ever, ever will. Together. You know, it it's really a, does. So, my girlfriend started this uh, about four or five years ago. She, you know, moved in here in March. And then I moved, she moved out and I moved in the uh, exact same spot that I'm sitting now. Uh, and I was I was the only tent here. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, you always like think of if somebody uh, you know attacks or whatever. So I had set my tent the other way, the door being in the trees, so that if somebody tried to come in, I could hear something before it actually happened. Uh, now you know, five years later, uh, everybody here is fairly respectful uh you know i don't need yeah i mean i leave my stuff in and, and I, i'm pretty sure it's going to be here uh when i come back so it's it's really improved uh we're dealing with a bunch of people that are in a situation uh that they weren't planning on but uh you know stuff happens in life yeah, i've never experienced um, uh, an issue where um you know i would be homeless before um in the last two years, I mean, uh, over a total of two years, I've probably been homeless for about a year, and, you know, give or take a spotty in between, um, or couch surfing with friends, or, or, or so on and so forth. Like, I mean, uh, staying with mom, or <laughs> but uh, it, it's nice to have a little little spot for yourself, a little bit, you know, it's not so private, I mean, you're in a tent side by side, but in a sense, you know, it, it's nice. I mean, get up in the morning, sit out, you see the sun rise, you know, like the wind's blowing, birds chirping, it's pretty quiet, nighttime, and, you know, it's not loud out here by midnight, 11 midnight, it's like silent out here usually, other than that, the odd conversation or, you know, something like that, but, so it's nice, I like, uh, I like having my own little area you can go to and, and you know, be yourself. Um, when I first came to Tent City, I was, uh, we were the third tent here. And we were actually here when we legally weren't supposed to be. Um, and my partner and I, along with a resident who's, who's now a resident here, wasn't a resident then, um, every day we would start by hand moving the rubbish that was around the trees and just in hopes that somebody would see that we were trying to do some good and that we actually weren't trying to be a menace to the land. We were actually just trying to clean it so that we could stay here and try to cause as little havoc as possible because at first the city of Moncton wasn't too 
wasn't too optimistic about um, having it. What people have here in Tent City is their own home, their own, something that they can just call their own and, and you know, they, they, where they feel safe. The Humanity Project provides a, a, a good, secure shelter where everybody respects, you know, what Charlie provides for everyone and what we can all, you know, share. But here, it's what gives everybody their pride and their dignity back, and that's being able to have something that they built on their own, whether it's a tent or, uh, you know, a cabin or, or you know, anything. Um, there's a few people here that just solely like the fact that they can leave their stuff outside of their of their home, which is the big thing here, and feel that it's safe. It's not going to get touched or it's not going to get bothered or thrown in the garbage, um, which is a big thing, you know, at a, one of the shelters. And a lot of the reason why nobody goes there um, is because of they don't feel safe or they, their stuff isn't safe. And here they feel that, that safety, that, you know, they, they feel at home. A homeless person, whether they're fresh into it or have been involved, you know, in the homeless community for a long time, one thing they haven't had is a home that they can call their own. And that's exactly what this place provides. And that's the start to giving back the pride and the dignity and, and the, you know, the respect for themselves that they've been lacking so much. Society thinks that we are dangerous people, but people don't know. They think um, that because of the state that people live in, that they're down dirty and full of disease and dangerous and they gotta look at society. Society has to look at the problem the right way. And that's what Charlie Burrow tries to put out. And, and, and I love that guy, I agree to that. I'll tell you right now. But you guys just said like you have respect for me and I, that's because I respect all of you. Yeah. I respect all of you and everything I do is for you guys at yeah. the end of the day. But but here's the thing. You need to have respect for each other. Because yeah. yeah. you need to still make it work within here. Because you guys at the end of the day you're all in the same situation. We're you're a community and you're here. I mean, you know, if, if somebody walks in and, and uh, you know brings trouble, uh, the whole community stands and says, uh, get out. You know. So yeah, it's it's this really tight community, uh, you know, we've uh, all been through hard times, uh, but uh, one thing we have is uh, love and respect. So Judy here, you know, like she's who I come to for a pep talk or any words of wisdom or, you know, anything, you know, if I need advice on something because, you know, she's she's been through it all. She's, you know, been there, done it, and, you know, ten times over, you know, she's been through the struggle and then gotten back and then been through the struggle again, you know. Yeah. So this is this is where I look, this is where I search for my, my wisdom and my... You know, I've been there, done that to uh, pep talk for sure. And she's always got words, you know, when, you know, when you need some advice, she's got it right there on the spot. <laughs> always, you know, you know, she's everybody's mom. Yes. Yeah. I feel so great about it. Judy, do you mind if you taking your oh, hat off? Okay, I'll take it, it, it off. No, just, 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 like, just, just to, oh, okay. Just so we can see your eyes. Yeah, the only Judy, reason why I had it on was on? the sun, eh? Oh, because okay. your hair is yeah. really pretty. Here, yeah. let me. Yeah, let's I had. Can I see? Oh, yeah, you're Here, let's there. take it off. It's, uh, you don't have to. Of you can even get a little bit lower because yeah. she looks lovely. Mm -hmm. And you can even get in a little closer, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I am very honored to be called mom. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have uh, nine children of my own. And, and I had brought them up together mostly by myself, and I worked, and uh, they had their friends over. That's a lot of kids to look after, nine plus their, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes two friends over. We always had a house full. Mm -hmm. That's what, I really enjoy being around people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I was here, live, uh, when I was here, I was the last guy living here. I was living actually right there, and Nicole just moved out, and, uh, I was the last guy down there, and Charlie came down and said, what are you going to do, Paul? I said, I'm staying there all winter, Charlie. <laughs> and he said, he offered me, uh, he said, uh, you know, how much rent can you afford? And she had like, I said, I ain't moving on a tent, Charlie. But the other people uh, were bothering me about calling MB Housing, and I got MB Housing, and I got out of here. But I missed it. <laughs> what do you miss? 
I met the camaraderie. I had to say these people are my friends, you know. Uh, the tent, or, yeah, it was hard to see. First night I stayed there, I had to go back. I had to come back down here because it was too quiet. I didn't have a radio. I, next day I got a radio and I could hear it. Because the train comes through here at 4 o'clock every morning, doesn't it, Judy? Train come by every morning at 4 o'clock? <laughs> Yo, you look good today, girl. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. Oh, I love her. I tease her all the time. If you're going through something, uh, there's somebody you can talk to in here that has gone through similar things or just uh, an open ear to uh, talk to someone, you know. That's, that's, that's one thing that uh, people need is communication. I mean, if, if you uh, have having a problem and you don't uh, talk to someone about it, uh, then the problem can become bigger because you're not discussing your problem with somebody else. And yeah, it's uh, you know like I mean yeah here it's like it's it's a tight knit community like uh, you know people uh, care about people uh, you know it's it's not just uh, you know we're neighbors like so yeah it's a good feeling. I feel honored that people come to me for advice and we really I really get to talk to them and I'm interested in what they have to say and what they ask me and and they are very interested to what I have to say. I am really they honored. Learn. Yeah, they learn from me too. They learn a lot. They are super. The perks are how I can help everybody here. Um, same with We Humanity. I, I look forward to going to sleep there every night just so that I can wake up in the morning and help put all the beds away. And you know, it was just kind of my, my thing. You know, and in, in here it's, it's the same thing, like I'll try to be the last person walking around at night just to make sure, you know, make check, double check to make sure if there's anything that can be done or anything I can do. And as soon as I come out of the, the tent in the morning, it, they're at, you know, whenever I wake up, it's uh, kind of walk around and see if anybody needs anything. And it's true, it's true, I'm telling you, you know, all these people here are cool, you know, they're all real people. And there ain't a whole lot of real people in this earth, you know. And these people are all real people. I'm not kidding you, Colin. That guy right there has been 37 years down here. 37 years. I don't know. We're, it's just a big family out here. We all make sure everyone's happy. I was going to say, do you have a favorite person in the community? Like here? Yeah. Not really. I, everyone, I treat everyone equally. I mean, some are a little bit lower than the others. But if, if I'm going to say anything, I'm going to put hands down and be Robbie. I mean, me and him went through a lot, and and he's and he's still beside me, right? Like, and, and that's great. And I mean, Ryder too, right? Like, I mean, both of them like are good people, and yeah, it's just them two. I I, I guess there's two, not one. <laughs> Ryan meant, named you as uh, one of the people that he feels closest to here. So could you maybe talk a little bit about um, the friendships and what that what that means to you? Hey Paul. Paul, can you guys just keep it down for about like five minutes? Okay. So we can. Hey, I just want to know you're still here, honey. Yeah, we're interviewing Robbie right on the other side of you guys. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Does it help to have other people around? Do you feel supported? Absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. I love the fact that uh, my neighbors to the east, my neighbors to the west, <laughs> and to the north and south, but. Uh, um, it's nice to have other people around. Um, we we all do our little part in, in a sense and, and try to help each other. You know what I mean? Uh, there's all walks of life here. There's all many ages. There's many stories. Many, you know, everybody has a history, and it's it's nice to you know to come together for a common goal in a sense where it's not just immediate survival. It's it's kind of you know, and it's it's not always it's not always been an easy route or road. Um, I mean, we all experience our own little rockiness. Well, hey. Tent City, it's a place that people can come and be accepted no matter what you are. You're accepted here. This is camaraderie. Good. <laughs> but people shouldn't have to live like this. You guys have a great community. You have a great community within yourselves of taking care of each other. And I think that's what the public needs to see more of. 
The public needs to understand. At the end of the day, like, I, I was guilty of it five years ago before I started the Humanity Project. I would walk by somebody that was homeless and I would say, why don't you get a job? Because I was under the mindset, I would judge a person before I would sit down and ask them what their name was and love that person and talk to them and see how I could help them instead, you know? And that's what we have to do. We have to shift the public over to realizing that you're all people. You're all people. You all have your individual needs and you all have your own individual problems. But you know what? So does every person in those houses out there. You know, sometimes it's hard. We've been here, but we cheer each other up. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes, we cheer each other up, and anyone's hungry, there's always someone with food. Yeah. Like last night, there was someone coming to my table. They said, do you have any food? I said, yeah, I got some cookies. I said, here, and I passed out the peanut butter and bread. They were happy about it. And I said, there's juice outside somewhere, just look for it. <laughs> and sure enough, they find it. They were happy about it anyway. And I'm happy to feed them too. I don't mind at all. I've become very distant with my with my family that I that I grew up around. And I've, you know, a very small circle, but I definitely have people close to me here that I call family and do anything for if, if they need me, absolutely. And uh, I feel the same way that they do, they, you know, they do the same for me. And I'd say that's what I enjoy the most is just having that, that sense of security, you know, with, with, that, with the family. Like I have friends here that I've become friends with that I would rely on more than my actual family. And it's, it's only because of where my, you know, blood family came from, where they grew up and how they grew up compared to, you know, the people that are beside me, my neighbors here, we kind of, we're, we all came from the same background. You know, we grew up the same way and, and in the same struggle and the same outlooks and we, you know, we have the same heart, right? I mean, I remember the first week I was here, one night it was cold, it was raining in that, and Ryder was the first one to ask, Lisa, are you warm in there? Are you keeping warm? Is your tent leaking? you need anything? Like, I brought for us, yeah. I brought Well, that's it. At the end of the day, you have each other. So, you know, I've learned a lot. Like, I, I, never, I never went to school or studied or took any courses on how to deal with this or how to deal with people. It just, I just, my heart tells me to help and that's what I follow, my heart. If there were more people like you out there, we wouldn't have a problem. I know I'm thankful for all, this, all the support yeah, and every, I, I wasn't expecting to have this much. Your hand all the way. You walk in and, and you see all these tents and you know there's people that are hurting that uh, don't have a lot of money and whatnot, but you know there's, there's a sense of like, yeah, this, this is, place where people like you know love and respect each other and uh, the reason that uh, we're here is because shelters uh, you have to go to bed at 10 o'clock and I'm sorry like uh, 10 o'clock it doesn't work for me so and and you know all the laws and, and whatnot uh, there's laws here but they're you know maybe not as pushed as uh, in a shelter area kind of thing so this is freedom this is home uh, this is uh, yeah this is where we uh, or uh, living for the time being until uh, other situations happen. The benefits of being out here is I have my own space. I do not have to conform to a curfew. I don't have to take somebody's Bible study if I just to stay warm. I am able to, to be me. That is the positive side. The downside is the fact that it's just not, it's just not a home. The way some people look at it in the public are that everybody living here is a bunch of spoiled brats who don't want to stay in the shelters because you just don't want to follow rules. But when you ask these people, well, do you know what the rules of the shelters are? They have no idea. Hey. So when you explain to them, you know, that you separate couples, you got to be in at a certain time of night. If you're not there, you can be out for 30 days. If you're late, you can be out for 30 days. Most of the public does not understand or know those things. Uh, the whole shelter thing, like, I mean, it's great for the winter time, but during the summer, we don't want to be cramped up. And it gives us a chance to have our own space out here and be able to have our own things that we own because we can't take them to the shelter. The alternative to being in a tent in your own little corner or slice of paradise is uh, either the shelters, which um, have schedules and in and out at uh, certain times for d different reasons and uh, crowd, you know, crowding features as well. So we get to, uh, you get to have your own little sanctum in a sense, right? Like, uh, so it's nice. I don't like the place, like, 
I'm not going to name it, but I don't like places like where they get mad at you or put you down or, you know, mm -hmm. yell at you and... Or kick you out. Yeah, you know, or kick you out for no reason. You got to do this or... Yes, you know, or you go out. In the cold, yeah. Yeah, like you get threatened before you get, you know... Yeah. You can do it without being threatened, but yeah. when you're threatened, no one wants to do it. They'd rather be out on I mean, that brings, I you, that brings you right down yes, in, the, in the day, does. you know? You could be having a great day and mm -hmm. that, that doesn't help you. I don't like it. Can you talk about what some of the problems are in the shelter? Because I think the public doesn't understand. Well, there's the, there's the people who want to recover from their drug use and there's the people that don't. And in this new shelter, there's going to be the wet shelter. There's going to be the and the wet and dry. Well, you can't have the wet and the dry side by side and still have recovery. It's kind of mixing, you know, fire with water. It's just one puts out the other, you know? Like me, myself, just since I came here, my addiction has gone, like, it's like night and day. Like, I've come so far and with very little effort. Like, I didn't really have to try. I just had to get away from the people that the, it, having it around me all the time, right? Like, I, here, I, it, you don't see it. There's like, you know, like we were saying, you can't find a needle here on the ground. I know from all four shelters in the wintertime, you'll never get everybody into a shelter because there were people that were still out in their tents all winter long. But when I talked to those people and I asked them, I said, if I gave you affordable housing right now, would you take it? They were all like, yeah, I'd take it. I just don't want to go stay in a shelter. I don't want to go stay around a bunch of people exactly. or whatever the reasons exactly. were. For the first time in five years, you guys have a little bit of power to yourselves where your voice can be heard. This is the first time where you've ever had the news coming to you, asking you, why are you outside? What's going on? And actually caring and putting it out in the public spotlight. We we only had 17 tents here at that time. There's probably 35 here now. You know, it's a lot. It's a problem. It's spread a lot farther than uh, it was three years ago. You know. Um, um, if I can offer any advice or try to help out the next person or the next face or the next uh, individual that comes through needing a, a, a tent city resident, um, I would say. Uh, you know, don't be shy. There's, uh, there's others. There's people that are here to help. There's organizations that are willing to, uh, you know, get that foot in the door and get you started. Um, whether it's donations for tents or uh, water or food or, or just, you know, just a kind face to talk to and a smile in the morning, right? Um, everybody here, it's, 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 you know, it's secure, it's safe, and the city's working. You know, like Manny from the city, he comes down every morning. And every morning, asks us if we need anything. He brings us coffee, and and Ron at the Salvins Clinic, and everyone at Salvins Clinic, um, or, or they come down, and they're super, super caring, and, and you know, driving people to different appointments, or picking them up to go to detox, or um, we've had. Uh, I mean, obviously Charlie and his group, they're super supportive. They're great. Um, they do lots. Um, I'm not uh, overlooking the fact that we've had people come in and ask about starting uh, Facebook pages and getting the ball rolling for a drive for fresh water, drinking water. Uh, there's a young gentleman I was talking to last week, his name's Alex. Today it was hot and a lot of us didn't have water. We ran out of water so I asked Charlie to go on and ask for some water for us and a couple other things, some batteries because a lot of us need batteries for flashlights. It'd be nice if we get like a solar power generator, but I, like I said, what's the sense of trying to do all that if they're going to shut us down here soon? It sucks. So there's going to be a lot of sad people though. If the new shelter opens on schedule on August 1st, we have three days to have this land completely evacuated. So none of our belongings, nothing can be here as of, I guess, three days after. So. For some, they'll probably go to the shelter. For others, they will probably just find another spot to go to. Is there anything else you'd like to say about living here? Well, I don't want to live here forever, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Can, you, can <laughs> but, you say yeah. sort of maybe what your, what your hope would be for the future? Well, my hope would be for the people here is to see them in their own houses. That's what I would like to see. Because there are a lot of, lot of people without houses here. And uh, they have nowhere to live. 
so they live down here with the uh, in the tent city to find a home they live in tents we all live in tents and I just feel bad and I feel good about knowing that there is someone there that would that are helping the people here to get housing. So let me ask you a question by just a show of hands. If I said to you right now, I have affordable housing for you, do you want it? Who would yes, take it? I would. Yeah. <laughs> if I had an income. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now that it's in the media and it's out there, it can go two ways. It can go really good. You can build public support from it and work your way towards taking that public support and putting it into affordable housing and into making life easier for all of you. But you have the opportunity not only to make it easier for yourselves or the guy that's going to be homeless tomorrow, but if we can put down a blueprint of how to make this work into a community, a real community of people to transition you from a tent to a tiny home to your own apartment to whatever it is you need because everybody has individual needs. We can put that blueprint down not only for Moncton, you can put that down for St. John, for Fredericton, for other parts of our country. But it's only going to work by all of us working together and having a plan. Because, I mean, if we all sit down together and work together, we'll be able to make this happen, right? And we, got, we, get, we do got the public's, some public support, but not all of it, and that's what we need. I mean, as far as the local homeless community, that's that's one of the big steps is getting all of us like Charlie was saying in on the you know on the same page and get everybody working together um, it's gone this far this quickly with only a few people kind of you know with the heart once we're all together on this and we're all working together and all pushing for the same goal I mean it it's unbelievable in my mind what can actually become of it so basically thank you Thank you everyone for, for, for being a part of this. Um, it, it always hasn't been easy, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, this is gonna be with me to the, to the end. Whether I'm here or not, or whether I've moved on or not, or changed my life, uh, this will be a part of me and I'll never forget it. And uh, the individuals that are around me, I'll never forget as well. So, I mean, uh, kudos to everyone here and kudos to everyone that's trying to make a change and a difference. This is basically how I go. Anything else you'd like to say? I just hope that the city of Moncton realizes that what they've done is that they've put some security and some safety into some people's minds. They've given people that little bit more hope that, you know, tomorrow couldn't be brighter. Tomorrow will definitely be brighter. Nice. Can I just get you to look like kind of past the camera? Like out yeah. there? I'm just going to get a shot of his B roll.